Hi, I'm Pastor Kyle Thompson from South Park Church. Welcome to today's Fireside Chat. Our topic is achieving work-life balance while working from home during the pandemic. And that's a lot easier said than done, believe me. Some of us might have worked from home before, but never during an international pandemic. And if we have family living at home with us 24-7, it increases the stress load. But whether you're working from home by yourself or you're in a house with a bunch of other people, it's still very stressful to achieve that work-life balance. And so today, I hope to offer you a word of encouragement. In the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, the people of Israel have been in captivity for a long time and they've just been released and they've come back home to move back into Israel and some of them are going into the capital city of Jerusalem trying to restore it to all of its glory. And they find out that there's some people who've been living there while they've been gone who aren't happy to see the Israelites return. Now, one of the things that they were doing was rebuilding the walls around the city of Jerusalem. And in Nehemiah chapter 4, it says that some of those who were working on the walls, actually all of those who were working on the walls, while they were using their tools to repair the walls, they had swords strapped to their belts because at any time their enemies could come in and interrupt them. And so they were always worried about when the interruption was going to come. Now, in a slight way, that reminds me of what it feels like working from home. Now, let me be clear that work and home are not enemies. We certainly want to do, do not want to do violence to anyone at work or at home. But if we're at home and we're working on our work, we sometimes have our heads on a swivel waiting to know when we're going to be interrupted by family. Or with our, when we're with our families, we're always wondering about when someone's going to call from work and interrupt us. It's, it's hard to focus on what we're focusing on with so many interruptions either from work or from family. So how do we achieve the balance of work and home life? So I'll tell you a little bit about what's worked for me and hope that it might be helpful for, for you. Understanding that you and I have, you know, very different home circumstances, but here goes. I think the most important thing for us to be able to have work-life balance, and this sounds again um, simple, but it's a lot harder to do than you might think, is to come up with a plan. As my friend Tim Cool says, be intentional. If we want to have work-life balance, we have to plan for that. That includes talking to the people that we work with. It means talking to our families that we put down in writing or something that's a plan that says this is how we plan to have home and work-life balance. And so if you don't have a plan, if you can't tell me what your plan is, I would probably say you're most likely not achieving the full balance of work and home life that you could. So what is your plan? And everyone's plan is going to be a little bit different. I work full-time for South Park Church. My boys are in second grade and sixth grade, and they're home, and they're having to do uh, schoolwork that their teachers are sending them. My wife, Laura, helps them with that. She also has started teaching piano lessons again online. She used to do that in person but, and stopped at the beginning of social distancing. So we have all those things going on. We also want to spend family time together. We want to have alone time by ourselves. We want to have some time individually with God. We want to, of course, eat. <laughs> we have chores to do, and we want to stay physically fit. So that's a lot to balance, and so we have to have a plan. Now, in my family, our plan centers around routine. We've gotten into a rhythm of when we work and when we play and when we hang out and when we have alone time. And so for us, having a routine, having that part of our plan has really helped us do better rather than worse. And so, for example... We all try to do our work at the same time. So when I'm doing South Park Church work or when Laura is teaching piano or the boys are in school and Laura's helping them, we try to do that all at the same time so that when we're done with our work, we can have family time together. We can have time to go and, and be alone by ourselves. We can eat together, cook together. And so it helps for us to try to all work at the same time so that we can do family at the same time. We take breaks during the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner to have family meal times and that kind of breaks up the day as well and so routine is important another you know example of that is right now I'm filming this uh, in order to for you to be able to watch this fireside chat uh, Laura and the boys are off on a bike ride and so they're having that special time together just the three of them sometimes Laura will go off and 
take her phone and just talk to one of her girlfriends or a member of her family to have alone time while the boys stay here outside and, and play. So we have a routine of what days to film and, and what they're going to be doing during that time. And so, again, routine for us has been very helpful. Another part of that is all hands on deck, that when it comes to family time and chores and cooking, that, that we're all contributing, whether we're making the meal, helping to clean up for that meal, or we're doing the laundry or putting up the laundry. It's, it's all hands on deck. We're all doing that together. So for us, that routine has been helpful. And so we have a plan, we have a routine, then what's important next is, of course, to have boundaries. These are rules that make sure that we follow our plan and we follow our routine. So a couple of those examples would be for us, uh, when I'm working on church stuff, I'm in my home office and uh, the door is shut, that means please do not disturb me unless it's work related. Uh, when the door is open, I'm ready to have family time. Uh, and this, of course, uh, has the exception of if there's an emergency, obviously come in and get me. And so that's just, that's one boundary. A boundary that we have with the staff at work and, and with me is we've agreed upon uh, who is working on which day at what time. And so we have one central document so that we can see when each other's working and that's when we're available to talk about work things. And if it's not a work time for us, then please do not disturb us. And so we have two full-time staff, the rest are part-time. And so we're all doing different things at different times. And so before I reach out to a staff member, I want to make sure that they're on the clock. And if they are, then I can talk to them. If not, I can leave them a message. They'll get back to me when they are on the clock. And, and again, if it's an emergency, we can interrupt each other. I think one thing to watch out for uh, during boundaries is how we use our devices, our phones, our laptops, our tablets, uh, because this is where we can have boundaries be broken very easily. So at our house, when we're having meals together, there are no devices at the table. When I'm having family time with my family, uh, I might have my phone with me, but all my work applications are turned off. If it's an emergency, someone can reach me through a phone call or through a text. And so when I'm doing work, I have the work applications on. I'm usually in my office doing that. And so again, devices are the thing that we really need to watch the most when it comes to boundaries. So we have a plan, we have a routine, and we have boundaries, and that helps us achieve work-life balance. Doesn't always go as planned, and sometimes we have to extend each other a lot of grace, but overall it's working. And I think Jesus uh, exemplified this in his life. He was very busy ministering to thousands of people. He had his core group of 12 disciples that traveled around with him. He had his own personal family, and he spent his own alone time with God, and so he was very careful about how he had boundaries to guard his time. And I think he had a plan and he worked that plan. He got into his own sort of routine. And so if it's good enough for Jesus, I think it's good enough for us. And it gives us hope that we can achieve work-life balance while working at home in a pandemic. So let's pray about that. God, thank you so much for giving us uh, a home life, a personal life, God, where we can just be ourselves uh, do stuff with family, do stuff with friends. Thank you, God, also for giving us a, a work life, God, and, and a career and, and a way to contribute to the world and, and that we can make a difference. And God, just please give us wisdom to be able to know how to balance those, especially to th for those of us who are working from home during an international pandemic. Uh, and God, we also pray for those who have lost jobs because of the coronavirus, that you will sustain them in the meantime and get them back to work just as soon as possible. God, we love you and we praise you, and we, we just ask that you give us wisdom and the ability to have work-life balance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much again for spending time with us in today's Fireside Chat. We'll see you tomorrow at 109. Have a great rest of the day.